So I'm going to talk to you today about method feeder ground baits and I think method feeders and ground bait is some, to, something that have got a little bit lost over the last few years to be honest because and rightly so pellets have been so good for catching fish on a method feeder. You know if, if I was going for a, a one-time bait and I wanted to pick the bait it would be like two mil pellets around the feeder because effectively the fish come in they suck up at the bait and as they eat the bait Obviously the pellets that get left, they can easily be picked up. So it doesn't end up with too much sort of wafty bait in the peg. But we all know that ground bait is really like the ultimate fish attractor. It's a lot finer, it's, it, the particles spread in the water a lot more and it really does drag and draw fish from all sorts of different areas. Now, that means that it can be underused on a method because people don't see it as always necessary. but. I'll tell you now, there's been some massive, massive matches won with ground bait on a method feeder. In particular, bream and F1s, those sorts of fish love it. And carp also have their time when they love it. If you think about it, ground bait down the edge is the ultimate way to catch carp down the edge at times. So a method with ground bait, catching those big fish can be amazing. So you just have to like keep an open mind. I would say probably nine times out of 10 I'm using pellets, but if nine other anglers are using pellets and I'm using ground bait, I've definitely got an edge there to my fishing. So that's obviously gonna be really important. Now, when I'm mixing my ground bait for method feeder fishing, what I do is I like to mix it in two different ways. It's really important because you don't know, one, how many fish are gonna be there, and two, you don't know the depth, you don't know what the conditions are gonna be like, where you're fishing. So I need a mix that can almost open up and fish straight away and I need a mix that's going to be a little bit more tackier that I can stick on the feeder and be heavier if I need it to. So I always mix up two different types of ground bait at the start. I like to almost know these are my ground baits because it, you know when you're on the bank and you're trying to work it at the time, it doesn't always work like that. You've got to be a lot more open-minded to sort of like go, right, if I take a bit of my sticky and if you start adding water in, it can all go totally wrong. Now, to do this, I've been using Super Feeder Sweet Fish Meal. This is the ground bait. I've got to be honest, I've just been using this most of the time all year because it's such a simple ground bait. It's mostly crushed expander, around 70%, coarse pellets, then some you know, more oilier pellets in there as well, all crushed down. But it's got sugar, salts, caramel flavor in there it smells amazing it's like the ultimate attractor and for me that's what makes it so good so if i'm going to use something attractive that's why this ground bait can be so good now also because it's got those slightly higher oil pellets in there it binds that expander that much better so you can be sure that it's getting to the bottom all in one piece so that's the ground bait i'm going to go for now the first thing is i'm going to mix my stickier ground bait first now what i'm looking for and this is just through experience and playing around, but I like to give you guys a nice, easy to follow guide if you need it to get you started. I like to go for four to one when it comes for my stickier mix, all right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill this cup up. I'm not, I'm not gonna mix up loads. I'm gonna fill this cup up twice, all right? With brown bait, like that. And then I'm gonna half fill the cup with water. So you could do four cups and one cup of water, obviously, but for this demonstration purposes, I just wanna do two and a half. So half full and pop that in there. Now work that around and I can see when I do that straight away that the ground bait's very claggy. It's almost like, it's not far off how I do it for the margins, to be honest. I would probably do it a bit more. Look, very claggy, like a claggy type ball. But what's gonna happen is over the next sort of half an hour is that's gonna totally absorb all that water. You know just how like your micros absorb the water and they all blow up nice and big? Obviously that's gonna all happen to this ground up pellet in there. So just work that around a little bit. I'm not too bothered about um, putting it for a riddle just yet. I just wanna make sure that the water's in there. And then I'm gonna put that into one of my bowls. There you can already see it starting to come round if you like. Now, I also need a really dry mix. I need a, I need a mix that effectively is gonna be the bulk of my mix that I can squeeze on the feeder nice and firm. It's gonna go down to the bottom and almost fish straight away. So I've got the two alternatives. Now, experience tells me that's about six to one. 
all right? It's, it's six or seven, something along those lines. I'm gonna go with six because I'm fishing on a relatively uh, deeper lake today here at Lindome on, on Loco. So just open that a bit, open that bag up a bit more. It's not coming out. So I'm gonna do three cups of ground bait. There's one. There's two. And there's three, all right? And then I'm literally gonna just let a little bit of water out of the bottom so I'm half full, half full there into there. Now, when I mix this up, this is gonna seem like what I'm gonna call normal ground bait straight away. It's gonna be like a nice medium consistency. And actually, when you look at this ground bait really close up, you can see all the sugars and salt actually in there. And what's gonna happen over the next half an hour, that will all totally and utterly dissolve and it'll be embedded within the flavor of those baits. So I always say this, this is my comparison. I love eating my, uh, my chips, but I need salt and vinegar on them. If I don't have that, I don't like it. This is my chips with salt and vinegar on. This is that extra flavor. This is that extra scent and smell that's gonna make a fish come to me rather than somebody else. And I've definitely seen a difference since I've started using that in harder areas. It seems like that's the sort of thing that can draw fish in and keep them there a bit longer. But you can see it's a lot drier, all right? That's a lot, lot, lot drier than what I've done there. So I'll work that around. I'm gonna pop that in the little bowl here, like that. So I've got two different types of mixes. I'm gonna give that around about 30 minutes or so. I'll push them for a riddle and then we'll take a look. So the ground bait has had loads of time to absorb all the water. And these are the two mixes. So the one at the front is the one that was four to one. And really, uh, basically you can see the particles have blown up. They're all a bit bigger. There's absolutely no evidence of the, the salts and the sugars there because it's all dissolved into the ground bait. And if I squeeze it with my fingers and use my fingers, you can see the stickiness of it because look it's got my finger marks still there within it now if i squeeze that into a hard ball i'm going to say i'd probably get like five or six minutes out of that at least before it broke down which is great it gives me the option for a longer chuck it gives me loads of options which i'm going to show you when i'm loading the feeder now this one at the back is the six to one and this is completely different if i squeeze this i've got to really squeeze it hard to get that sort of ball. But if I just literally touch it with my fingers, it'll break down. So I know that that will get to the bottom. Look, you can see there the, the finger marks, but if I just flick, look, it just crumbles away. Now that's great. It means that if I squeeze that on the feeder, it'll get to the bottom for sure, but it will break up really quickly because it's a drier mix. The water will try to penetrate it more there and then. And you can even see actually there's an odd bit of salt on that still that hasn't dissolved. That's how, how dry it is. I'm going to call this like almost like it's a little bit crunchy. Like if I put it between my fingers, I can feel odd hard bits of pellet. So it, it is completely different to this mix at the front. And it means I can two, do two different things. Now, whenever I'm fishing with ground bait, for me, it has to be the traditional method feeder. I'm not looking for the banjo style feeder with ground bait because I don't really want to compact it and press it hard. I want the grips of a method to do the gripping for me, if you like. And then that allows me to um, work it and do it how I like to use it. And then a method is very open, so it will all break up and be there. When I go to wind in, it just leaves that almost like puffy, scenty cloud in the peg. Now, for the, for the sake of today's fishing, don't want anything complicated for beyond the ground bait. So I've just got some six mil hard pellets. And this is the sort of thing that you guys can do. If you love your pleasure fishing, you just want to go out and have a day and play around and experiment and see the differences, that's great. If you love fishing matches or open matches, club matches, whatever it is, again, I'm going to show you the, the almost like the power of what bait can do rather than wafters and maggots and corn and that's another part of fishing. That's a different part of fishing. This first part is just literally about how to load and work and use the bait you've got. So I'm just gonna show you the first example. Now, 
I don't have to fish with a clip on when I'm fishing um, on a commercial. Um, I've got a short nine foot soft rod. I've got six pound lines. So if I hook a big fish, I've got to be honest, I should be able to boss it enough with a clip on. But on a day like today, I've got a perfect opportunity. I've got a lovely sort of dark shadow in front of me. So I'm going to fish in a little bit of an area. Ground bait allows me to fish in an area, not in sort of one hole. It means that I'm just trying to make an attractive area for the fish to come to. And I'm going to show you what I mean by that, because to start off with, I'm literally just going to get my mould. I'm going to put the dryer mix in. Let's call it the dryer and the wetter mix for now, right? Always make your tip a bit slacker when you're using a method, because you don't want it to get stuck in the mould. And I'm going to just squeeze it in once and nip it out. Now that will literally, that will cast out to the spot, <coughs> excuse me, but it will break up straight away on the surface. So I'm just going to cast it out to roughly the spot, give it a little shake and wind it in, just like so. And then I'm going to do exactly the same thing again. This is again, I'm just trying to attract a few fish into my peg. I'm using all my feeder fishing skills here to optimise my ground bait, my attraction. Look around the lake today, it's very flat and still. It's not you know, it's not, um, it's not got a wind on. I need to draw some fish to where I'm fishing. Same sort of thing, look, chuck it in. So I've two nice ground baity active splats there. There's gonna be loads of activity in the water. I bet if you looked focused there, it wouldn't even surprise me to see a fish starting to move around there. Now for my first fishing cast, and for the early part of the session, all I'm going to do is use the dryer mix, but I'm going to squeeze it on a lot harder so everything breaks down and comes off the feeder. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to half fill the method, drop my 6mm pellet in the middle, and I'm going to press this dryer mix down on top. And I'm really going to make sure that's nice and full and compact. <coughs> Excuse me, I've got a little bit of a cough going on. Watch your tip. A lot of people say to me, oh, the stuff gets stuck in the mould. That's because your tip's too tight. If the line's pulling tight, it'll get stuck in the mould. But this time, really gonna squeeze it on hard, all right? And when it's out of the feeder, just wanna touch it. Yeah, rock hard, absolutely rock hard. 100% that is gonna get down to the bottom, all right? So now I'm just gonna cast in exactly the same area that I've cast that ground bait. Really gonna concentrate, lob it out there. Just stop it. Look, look at that, see that? I don't know if the camera managed to catch that or not, but there was actually a carp almost like on the surface where I'd cast. So I've obviously attracted some fish in immediately. Just going to put my rod onto the rest. So we're still, it's still nice and warm. It's still a warm time of the year. It's not gone cold yet, obviously. So I'm just going to chuck that out, make sure my clutch is all set nice. Yeah, we're all good. I'm just going to tighten my tip slightly. I don't like loads of tension on a method. I like the line. As you can see, I've got my rod rest just off the water. And I almost like the to watch the line sort of bowing down to the water. Right, so when you get liners and indications like that, it doesn't really disturb the feeder too much. So that's what I'm looking for. Don't forget, when you're method feeder fishing, your bite is going to be vicious. It's going to be a really aggressive pull round or it's going to be a pull round and a drop back. So just having that bit of tension and you'll soon know if it's dropped completely slack because the rod will be sharply pulled and then come back. Right, so <clears throat> literally three minutes. That's all I'm going to be giving my cast to begin with. I don't want to be waiting loads of time because for the first sort of like, look, you see the activity, there's clearly some fish in the peg straight away. The attractiveness of ground bait has worked immediately. Literally haven't even had any cast out onto the lake or anything yet. So just those couple of quick chucks. You can imagine now there's fish in the peg, there's fish kicking around, that firmer chuck with the <coughs> harder ball to get down to the bottom. But in the first, I'm gonna say 10 minutes or so, which is gonna be, Look at that big liner there. So look, there's, I've attracted fish in the peg straight away. Really great to see. But for the first 10 minutes or so, what I want to do is leave that ground bait on the bottom. I want to almost build up a little area in my peg 
where there's going to be some ground bait on the bottom. I'm not even that fast about catching a fish at this point, I've got to be honest. Um, if I get one, it's just a bonus. But I'm trying to use the first 10, 15 minutes of my day to make sure that the fish in this lake come in to where I'm fishing. I want to draw them in to where I'm fishing. And by, do it, by using the sort of drier mix, squeezed on the feeder really hard. It's gonna go down, but we're on two minutes now. I can guarantee you all that ground bait is totally melted away. I've literally just got a six mil pellet there waiting for a fish to come and pick it up, which is a great way to leave some bait there. But after we've done that, we're gonna switch and we're gonna use this stiffer mix in a different way to make sure those fish are pinned to the bottom. So let's see how this first little period goes. Maybe I get one, maybe I don't. Then we'll come back and we'll look at how we're gonna use that ground bait to get those fish really feeding down on the bottom where we wanna catch them. So we're all good. We've managed to have one second chuck and then third chuck not. So my tip is going crazy. This initial dry ground bait has brought so many fish into the peg. It's, it's insane to be honest. <clears throat> but now what I wanna do is I wanna almost starve them on a little bit so a different a different plan and i'll show you what to do so i'm going to get this stiffer mix now and i'm going to fill the method mold up with the wetter mix all right and i'm going to put that in and i'm going to give that a really good squeeze onto the feeder now i totally and utterly expect to wind in this feeder with that ground bait still on there all right i want that ground bait to still be on there i want the fish to almost be like yes I need to get at this, this ground bait right here, but obviously not all wafting up. And then I'm going to get my pellet <clears throat> and I'm going to put almost like a tiny bit of ground bait in the bottom and just cover the pellet in some ground bait. So look, in the feeder there, it's not even full. And I'm just going to give that a nice, I'm going to call it like a normal push onto the feeder. All right, so there we go. Now that ground bait, you can imagine this feed is going to go to the bottom. This top layer of ground bait is going to melt off in, I'm going to say, around about 30 seconds. And it's going to leave my pellet there. So we've got the attraction of that ground bait there working. Just be careful because there's a coot right where I want to cast. So I've got that ground bait working. It's going to get my pellet to the bottom where all the fish are. That ground bait is going to melt almost immediately you can hear it's a solid sound as it goes in <clears throat> i'm just going to drop that down there so put my rod down sink my line let's do my three minutes again but this time you can imagine because i barely squeezed that top layer on like i said i know because the ground bait's got the stickiness because it's relatively sticky ground bait i know that that got to the bottom okay because like i said this ground bait has got enough binding power to do that if you use just a crushed expander on its own, that crushed expander would just melt off. But ground baits like Match Method Mix and this Super Feeder Sweet Fish Meal, it's going to get to the bottom. But already that ground bait's melted off. So my pellet is almost laying there, if you imagine, next to the feeder in the little tiny bit of ground bait that's left. And we've got a stiff ball of ground bait. And that's great because I've been getting so many indications in this initial period. What I want to try and do is get a fish to come down now and really fight to get at the bait. Because <clears throat> if I keep giving them too much almost loose ground bait, almost free stuff, what's going to happen is I'm going to end up with a fish going crazy, swimming around the swim and actually being quite difficult to catch. So using these ground baits, to attract the fish into the peg and then using them in a different way to catch them is what can be so effective. And it just shows the difference why some people might catch your ground bait and some people might not. If you imagine, obviously today I'm pleasure fishing, there's not many people on the lake, I'm gonna have a lot of fish in the peg. But imagine a scenario when you're on a busier lake with lots of fish in the peg or, sorry, lots of people on the bank or you're in a match situation where the few fish that are about really need almost winning. That's where ground bait can be so good and so powerful, particularly if you're in shallow water as well. If you can cast to an island, if you can get your bait into sort of less than two foot of water, 
it's just the same as when you're fishing in the margins. Those fish will almost have nowhere to go, but right down where your bait is, an aggressive tap there, right down where your bait is, and then you'll be able to catch them really quick. So again, I'm just gonna have sort of like two or three, three minute chucks now. Just got some fish around the feeder now, so great chance of getting one, I think. Um, but obviously you can understand why I need the two different types of ground bait at this point, because I can see now, I definitely didn't have any, as many liners in that first 90 seconds, but now we're sort of like two minutes in, getting a few little tugs and pulls. So it wouldn't surprise me if any second now, the rod goes round where a fish eats the pellet. We're just literally now relying on a fish eating our hook bait. And it, wouldn't, you know, it doesn't have to be pellets, it could be maggots, it could be a piece of corn, it could be whatever you like fishing with, to be honest. It doesn't have to be a pellet, but obviously today for this example, a pellet makes it really easy to see. So we're up to three minutes. I'm just gonna give it, because I had a couple of indications, just gonna give it another 10 or 15 seconds. And if not, I'm gonna repeat the process two or three times. Let's see what happens to the peg. Yep, right on cue. <clears throat> Lots of fish down there at the moment. Lots of different fish as well. Nice skimmer this time. You can actually see on the feeder itself there exactly what I was talking about. So look, not like a pound skimmer hanging on, but look, the ground bait, the initial ground bait is still on the feeder and that's what i'm talking about that's why you you almost like the getting the fish almost nudging and pecking and that's why i need that stiffer ground bait because when there's lots of these in the peg i don't want almost like the bait just being knocked around and pushed around so quickly that there's nothing left i need that scent i need that attraction there to get the fish in now if I feel like the fish have drifted off or anything like that, so I caught an F1 and a couple of skimmers, for example. So what we're going to do is let, let's put a couple of loose ones in. The one, pr the one pushes back out into the peg. Again, just literally casting it out. As soon as it hits the water surface, I'm winding it in. You can see the ground bait, the softer ground bait has come straight off the method. And this is a great way of almost like encouraging the fish into the peg and getting the fish to come in and have a, a little look. And you can do this if you were doing it to an island or if you would, that's a little bit to the right, but similar sort of place. Again, I'm not trying to fish in an area today. I'm trying to keep the fish in. I'm not trying to clip up. I'm trying to sort of fish across an, an area. And then same thing again. Now I know I've almost put some feed into the peg. I can put that Six mil pellet back on the hook. Just clean the bream slime off my hook length. <clears throat> and then same again, get that stiff mix. Push that in nicely there. So that's definitely going to go to the bottom. Stay there on the bottom, stay on the feeder. I'll just stay on the feeder a little bit longer. I don't need to put, even push it that hard, to be fair. I'm actually going to lay my pellet in first this time. And then half fill the mould with the the dryer mix, give it a little bit of a nip. And you can see, look, you can almost see it's, the pellets just trapped in the top layer of ground bait. So now I know exactly the same. I'm still gonna be feeding a little bit in the peg. Right in amongst all that. Oh, I even hit a fish on the way down. You can tell how many fish that's drawn into the peg. So it's done its job nicely. Again, three minutes on the clock. And you'll get little runs. You'll get runs of fish coming into the peg. You'll get times when the fish are going to um, go down and feed more aggressively. And you can actually mix it up. You can go, right, the fish are really feeding and I'm getting them quickly. <clears throat> By all means, just use the dryer mix. Cast it out, get it down there, get the fish attacking it, sucking it all up in a one -er catch those fish but if you feel like the fish are coming into your peg and you're just not getting the same hookup rate that's when you need to look at what I'm doing right now so the old saying the fish will tell you what to do and that's what I'm trying to get at so 
you know, if I don't get one this cast, I might have five casts in a row with just this dry mix, bury my pellet in the middle, squeeze it on, get it to melt down, get that traditional method feeder style pickup where they suck it all up in one go, almost the pellet just comes in with the ground bait in one go. And then, again, if I start to feel like I'm not converting enough fish or not catching enough fish, I can switch back then to the stickier mix and do the same thing. I can, I can always give the, the fish the chance. The trouble is with the sticky mix is, is unless you're waiting a long, long time, I don't usually like it to hold the actual pellet in place because <clears throat> I don't want to end up with the pellet like wedged in the ground bait, which is why I always just give the, the top layer, just that dry mix so I can be sure that my pellet's going to escape. But it's working well so far. Like I say, F1s and skimmers are target. So let's see if we can get a few more. One of the great things about this technique is that I feel that it catches what's coming to your peg at each time. So I've had a couple of F1s, but I've just had a run now. This is like my third or fourth in a row because we had a lot of skimmers. It was like, it was basically solid with skimmers. You could get one every single chuck in. And it was like, mm, I don't feel like the, fi the better fish are there. And then out of nowhere, yeah, this, is three, this one's three in a row, this is. So, you know, it's literally in and then you're getting a better fish. And they're big stamp fish as well. And I just always think like, look at that. I mean, look at the size of that for an F1. Absolutely massive fish. And they, they want to come and feed on what we're doing. It's just... It's almost like we've got something that's so attractive that we draw every fish in. But of course, these are going to bully out your uh, skimmers and that when they want to come and have a go. And maybe later in the day when it's carp feeding time, I expect the carp will probably push these out as well, maybe. But, you know, that's why I think what I'm, you know, this ground bait approach can be so effective at times. I mean, they're big. Look at that. Absolutely cracking fish. They're absolutely a fantastic stamp. So. I'm going to continue with this. I'm going to have a little play. I'm definitely finding it better to um, use the drier mix a little bit more today. I've only I caught a couple of fish on the stiffer mix, but it wasn't quite as effective, which is strange because talking off camera before I started, I said, oh, I've got this lovely little technique of using this slightly stiffer mix, and it's worked for me so many times. So just goes to show you've always got to be a little bit open-minded when it comes to fishing, but I'm going to load that up again with the just the dry mix, get it back out there. I'm gonna bury that nice and deep. I'm gonna bury it nice and deep this time in the ground bait because I almost want to be a little bit more traditional methody at the moment. And hopefully we'll keep catching them. Tell you what, it's been a really interesting day. F1s and skimmers mainly today. Carp haven't quite played ball, but that you can see that looking around the lake. I, well, I haven't actually seen a carp caught today. I've seen lots of, uh, you know, obviously other fish, but these F1s have loved the ground bait. It's just got stronger and stronger as the day's gone on. And in the last couple of fish have been with that harder ground bait as well. But I think that effectively the fish just love, they just love that ground bait. And I'm gonna say, if you've got some shallow water on the venues you go to, 
this is where ground bait would really score. I'm on a slightly deeper lake today and I feel like maybe the depth doesn't make it as suitable for ground bait. But if I was on a, say on Bonsai Lake, that's a lot shallower, I know how deadly that ground bait approach can be. So on your commercial, if you fancy catching a boatload of those and having a brilliant day's fishing with probably the simplest bait tray you could possibly have, give those little ground bait tips a try and let us know how you get on.